Do you know the motor effect? Well, in this video, I'm gonna give you a simple demonstration to deepen your understanding of the motor effect. And all I need is a nice copper rod and two magnets in this U channel, plus a few other things. So stay tuned. Now, before we start, this video is sponsored by Science with Matt, and Matt was kind enough to give me the magnets and the U-shaped channel and the copper rod for this particular demonstration. More about him at the end of the video. Now, what I have here is a setup where I have my copper rod fixed into this retort stand. And I have it below, I have my magnet and my U-shaped channel sitting on a set of scales. And as you can see, the scales is reading 89.24 grams. And that's simply the mass of the magnets and the channel. But I have the electricity connected to it. That is, I am going to run a current through the wire. And I'm doing this by obviously a voltage supply. I've got an ammeter to show us the value of the current. And then I have a rheostat, which allows me to modify the amount of resistance and therefore modify the current going through the copper rod. Let's see what happens when I turn it on. So what do you notice? You see an increase in the readings of the scale and that is due to the motor effect. Now why? Well first of all the scale reading is increasing so therefore there is an extra force apart from the weight of the magnet and the channel that is being applied there. So in other words there is a greater force applying onto the set of scales onto the magnet and that is done by the copper rod and that is part of the motor effect. But the motor effect is often referred to as the force on a current bearing wire in a magnetic field. So how does that work? Well, obviously there is a force on the magnet, but Newton's third law says forces come in pairs. So just as the wire, or in this case a copper rod, is applying a force on the magnet downwards, equally the magnet is applying a force on the copper rod in the opposite direction. So in other words, there is now also a force on the copper rod going in the upward direction. Now that allows us to determine the direction of my magnetic field. How? Well, I have here a circuit and we can determine the direction of the current. Now if we follow the wires along we are finding that the current is actually going in that direction. Now if the current is going in that direction and as I said if the magnet is pushed down the copper rod is being pushed up so therefore using my right hand palm rule I have a situation where I'm putting my hand in this direction, my force is upward, my current is going in that direction, and my magnetic field is therefore coming towards me or from that side to that side. Now, some of you are saying, hey, I don't know that rule. Well, do you use Fleming's hand rule? Yes, I do. Now, if I use Fleming's hand rule, FBI, we know my force is adding in the upward direction. My current, which is my finger here, has to be in this direction, and so my magnetic field is towards me. It's consistent with my palm rule. Now, what would happen if I change the direction of the current? No surprises. Clearly, the current is going in the other direction. A magnetic field is still the same, but now the force is in the opposite direction. The force on the wire is in the downward direction, which means the force that the wire exerts on the magnet is in the upward direction, and that results in a lowering of the scale reading. But wait, we have more. We have simply here a qualitative way of looking at the motor effect, but can we actually use this setup to determine the strength of the magnetic field? Yes, I can. How do I do that? Well, simply I have the ability to record the current and record the readings. And therefore, by graphing various currents and various readings, I can establish a relationship. And from that relationship, I can determine the magnetic field strength that exists between those two things. Now, I need a number of variables. And the first variable I definitely do need is the original mass, which I've already quoted, and the length here. And the distance here is simply equal to five centimeters. I'll record some series of results and let's have a look at them now. So now I've collected my data and you can see the results in the table behind me. Now the first column is the obvious independent variable. It's the current that I recorded. And of course I have the second column, the dependent variable, the reading on the scales. But I need to do a couple of things because the reading of the scale is due to two things. It's the force due to the mass 
acting on the scales and of course the force due to the magnetic field effects and we need to just look at the magnetic field effects if we're going to try to determine the strength of the magnetic field and so what I've done here is our reading is 89.28 and the first thing I need to do is I need to subtract the actual mass and that gives me the mass reading just due to the magnetic field force effect but I need to also convert that into kilograms, which is the proper MKS or SI unit. So this is the value right here of the reading of the scale that is solely due to the magnetic field. And so then I, what I need to do is I need to multiply that by 9.8, which gives me my reading of the force due to the magnetic field. And so that is in essence what I've got. And I've done that for every particular reading there. Now the next thing to do is to graph the data, but of course we want to graph the relationship between two variables. The first variable we want to look at is the current, which is this, and the second thing is the force due to that particular current. And so what that means is, is if I graph that relationship, I should graph a relationship, I should put the current on the x-axis and the force on the y-axis. And so now here is our graph and it's a lovely linear graph too. We have our current on the x-axis and our force of the dependent variable on the y-axis. And what can we determine here? Well, we can determine the slope. The slope of course is the rise over the run. And so therefore the slope is simply equal to the force divided by the current. But we've got the equation up here of this particular line that the Google Sheets has calculated for us. So the slope actually equals 1.45 by 10 to the power of negative 3. But what does that actually mean? Well, let's draw back our understanding of the motor effect. Our motor effect says that the force of a current bearing wire in a magnetic field is equal to the magnetic field strength multiplied by the current multiplied by the length that is in that magnetic field. Now, if I now rearrange this so that I get F over I on one side, what do we have? We have our slope and that is equal to B times L. Now you can see here, our M is given for us. So what we have is 1.45 by 10 to the power of negative three is equal to our magnetic field strength multiplied by the length, which is 0.05. And so now it becomes really easy to work out. You rearrange that and you get 2.9 by 10 to the power of negative two Tesla, or what we can say, it's equal to 29 milli Tesla. And so there you have it. You can use our simple effect of our magnets and our bar to actually measure the strength of the magnetic field, not just qualitatively, but quantitatively as well. This video is sponsored by Science with Matt. And as well as a high school teacher, he also sells a variety of physics equipment that he sells at very competitive prices. And I have received a number of, of those items and been able to use those in my video productions. And they're of excellent quality and I encourage you to check that out. You know, he also runs a number of professional developments for science teachers as well. And again, I encourage you to check out his website and find out more. Well, I hope that has helped you understand the motor effect a little better. Please like, share and subscribe and put a comment down below if this has been helpful for you. And consider supporting me either via buying me a coffee or by Patreon to help me produce more physics content. My name is Paul from Physics High. Bye for now.